Good morning, everyone. Good morning. God bless you. Welcome, welcome to Morning Coffee in Heaven with Jesus. Let's take a sip. This is a cup that my brother Joe bought me. He brought back from Texas. And he was in the DOD, him and his wife. And he would always bring me cups from whatever state he, he went to. So kudos to my brother Joe. I hope you're having a good day. God bless you. God bless you. Um, we are here. Feel free to write something in the um, uh, the chat. Just make sure it's of the Lord. Amen. There we go. I had something there. They must have took it off because I had something there. Amen. Good morning, Miss Lexi. How are you? Love you, darling. Amen. 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 All right. Okay. <laughs> Just in case. Hallelujah. So we're going to talk today about the overpowering presence of the Lord. And this is something that we all need in our lives. We need not our presence. We have enough of our presence. Amen. We need the overpowering presence of the Lord. And this is why a lot of people do not have power in their lives, why they can't seem to get over because they don't have the presence of God in their lives. They don't read, they don't read the Bible. They don't study. And in fact, if they did, if they read the Bible as much as they play games or go shopping or eat or drink or whatever, they would have the presence of God in their lives all the time. Amen. Uh, let's start with John 18, 6. Okay, turn to John 18, 6. Uh, well, John 18, 1, and I'll read from there. And it says, when Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with disciples over the brook Cedron, where was a garden into which into the which he entered, and his disciples and Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place for Jesus oftentimes resorted uh, thither with the disciples. Judas then, having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, cometh thither with the lanterns and torches and weapons. This is how the world comes to Jesus, and this is how they're going to come to us too. Amen with their lanterns and their torches and, and weapons. Amen. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto them, Whom seek ye? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus Nazareth. Jesus said unto them, I am he. Amen. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. As soon then as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. As soon as Jesus said, I am he, he let them know that he knew they was coming for him. They fell to the ground because the power of the Most High God had just hit them and overcame their flesh you can't outdo the Lord. Amen. And then he asked, and then asked he them again, whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. If therefore ye seek me, let these go their way. Amen. That they, that the saying might be fulfilled, which he spoke of them, which thou gavest me, have I lost none. And then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and smote the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Then Jesus said unto Peter, put up thy sword into thy sheath. The cup which my father has given me, shall I not drink it? And then the band and the certain of officers of the Jews took Jesus and bound him and led him away. When Jesus spoke... And he said, I am he. Amen. They fell backwards. Now, how many times have we heard about people being, now we don't know about the word slaying, people being slain in the spirit. First of all, the spirit doesn't kill. He brings life. If they would just look up the word slay. Amen. Uh, he, but I, we understand what they mean by that, right? He brings life. Okay. And they, as soon as he said, I am he, the power in him knocked them out. You cannot outdo God. The Holy Spirit 
nowadays, he left the Holy Spirit to us. He empowers us. This is why every time I preach, I ask the Holy Spirit to use me. There were times I didn't. And a lot of people can probably say this. There's some people who we just didn't ask him to use us. And, and you've got to ask him to use you. He doesn't, you got to give him permission to use you. God doesn't do anything without our permission. We're not puppets. You have to do it his way. You have to do it according to his will. He can do whatever he wants, but he's not going to use you as a puppet like the devil tries to use us. We know God can do anything. With God, all things are possible, but he's not like the devil. The devil's evil, evil and tries to use us. And some people fall for it and allowing to. The Holy Spirit empowers us, gives us authority, authorize, entitle, license, permit, allow, sanction, warrant, commission, delegate, certify, qualify. Only if you have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. And this is not even in my notes because the Holy Spirit showed this to me and I, I don't want to forget it. They, they, we have to get closer to the Holy Spirit. There are some people who are afraid of him. Do not be afraid of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Know that you know that you know that he is the Spirit of God and he is here for your good. Amen. God wants us to get to know the Holy Spirit more. Okay, yes, we talk about God, Yahweh, Yehovah. We talk about Yeshua, Jesus the Christ. But people refuse. They, they, they do not talk about the Holy Spirit of God much. He is the power of God given to us by Jesus. Amen. And if you don't use the Holy Spirit, not use per se, but if you don't allow him to come into your life and, and, and use you and teach you and guide you, you will not have any power. And this is why we know there are some churches, some places of gathering that don't have the power. They preach the word and, and they, they go through the, the religious stuff and they dance and fall on the floor and all that kind of stuff and, and, and have their pretend slings, which have, have been known to happen. Okay, But they don't have the real spirit of God. When you have the real spirit of God, you do not have to act because it's real. Speaking of acts, let's go to Acts 9, 1 to 4. Acts chapter 9, verses 1 to 4. Okay. Let's see. All right. We're, no, we're talking about Saul here, the Apostle Paul, before he became the Apostle Paul. Amen. Hallelujah. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went into the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound into Jerusalem. We, you've heard before, Saul hated Christians and killed Christians. They, he was there when they stoned Stephen. And in history, according to scholars, allegedly was holding the coats and the jackets or whatever you call them then at that time, uh, tunics of the people who stoned Stephen. He did not like Christians. And how many people do you know nowadays? Do, they do not like Christianity. They don't want you to talk about the Bible. Don't talk about that Bible with me. And they make all kinds of excuses about the Bible. And, and, and the Bible was written under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. God gave it to men. Amen. And they're still fighting the Bible. Saul hated Christians, killed Christians. He asked for permission, amen, to slaughter them. But, as they say, but God. Verse 3, and as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. Uh oh 
Change, changing, everything's changing now, changing Saul's life. Amen. There appeared, uh, shined round about him a light from heaven. Okay. It wasn't light from man. Amen. It, this was a special light. Only that special light can change your life. Amen. When God hits you with his light, his fiery light, your life will change. Amen. And it says in verse four, talking about the overpowering presence of God. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him. Okay, now, if he hated Christians so much and he was this strong, wise man, what could make him fall to the earth because a light hit him? It had to be the light of God. Amen. The, the light of God is the only thing that is going to stop our enemies. Amen. Especially when you pray the word of God, when you pray according to the word of God, try to use the word of God as much as you can while you're praying. Amen. Because when you pray the word of God, angels activate and help you. Amen. And it says, and he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, who art thou, Lord? Now, why would he say Lord with a question mark? Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, notice it's capital L, little O-R-D. When you see capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, it's mainly talking about Yahweh, God, Father God. When you see capital L, little O-R-D, Jesus, amen. So Jesus confronted Saul, <laughs> amen. This is what a lot of people need nowadays. They need a confrontation with G from Jesus, amen, to change their evil ways. When people try to change their evil ways on their self through their flesh, they cannot do it. Maybe for a time. Amen. The light of God. Amen, shadow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, uh, and he said, who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee. To kick against the pricks. He's telling him, it is hard for you to kick against the pricks. Okay? This is your conscience, okay? Kicking against the pricks is how you think. Going against the going against the will of God, going against God, going against Christians, going against the word. Amen. That's kicking against the pricks. And every time you do, you're gonna bleed. You're going to lose much blood trying to go against the word of God. Amen. And he trembled, astonished, and astonished. He said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, now he's saying, what would you have me to do? All of a sudden, Saul, Saul killed people. And now he's asking Jesus, he said, what would you have me to do? Yeah, I can't deny Jesus head on when he, when he talks to you. When he talks to us and when we hear that still small voice, when the light comes, amen, you can't deny it. The overpowering presence of God, you cannot deny it. And this is what a lot of people need. They need a saw experience in their lives. Too many people try to change on their own and you cannot do it without the power of God, amen, without Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And, and he told him, arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but they didn't see anybody. The men that were with him, now he's having this experience, right? And the men that were with him heard the voice, but they couldn't see anyone. There was no one there. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Saul's fanaticism against the saints. This is what we're talking about. His fanaticism against the saints. He hated them. God can stop us in our tracks. Amen. God can stop you in your tracks. You can act like you're, you're going to do what you want to do all you want to. You can act like God can't help you. God's not going to do this. He, he doesn't care. You would be surprised one day whenever you have a saw, a saw on a Damascus road experience. Amen. Amen. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 to 9. 
Amen. We go in my E sword. Second Thessalonians two one to nine. Okay. Oh, Second Thessalonians two. Yeah. One to nine. Let me see. All right. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by the word nor by the uh, letter, all as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Whoso opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things, and now ye know that withholdeth that he might be revealed in this time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed. And this is what the light of God does. This is what the Holy Spirit of God does. His presence reveals wickedness. Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Okay, in verse 8. Let me see. Uh, yeah, verse 8. And go back to verse 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. Okay, let's talk about our mouths for a minute. Okay, what does your mouth reveal? What does it reveal about you? The spirit of his mouth. This light came from his mouth. Amen. Hallelujah. This light came, comes from God's mouth. Amen. What is coming from your mouth? Amen. What is coming from your mouth? You know, the word is called a double-edged sword. Are you speaking the word? So what's coming out of our mouths? We have to see what is coming out of our mouths. No grumbling, no griping, no complaining. The power of God is not going to use us if we grumble and complain all the time. Amen. The word is called a two-edged sword. There was something in the Roman days, there was a sword which was a one-edged sword for blunting. Okay, one end of it was flat and the other end of it was was uh was sharp. Thank you, Lord. Help me, Jesus. Amen. Holy Spirit. Okay, one end was was, was blunt, blunted, and the other end was sharp. Okay, and it was called the gladius sword. Okay, but what happened was they weren't winning wars the way that they should with this gladius sword. Okay, so they came up with a double-edged sword. And when you are fighting uh, the, the enemy out of your life, okay, you have to use a double-edged sword, which is called, the, which is the word of God. The word of God is a double-edged sword. You catch, you catch them coming and you catch them going, okay? And when the Romans were trying to kill their enemy with this gladius sword, it wasn't doing much for them because they only had one edge, amen? But when they changed it to a double-edged sword and they stuck it in their enemy, Sounds gross. I apologize, but they it, it happened. Amen. And when they stuck it into the enemy, it pulled out all of their entrails. Okay. And this is what the, the, the word of God does in the spirit. He pulls out all the entrails. Amen. He sticks it in, turns it and, and everything comes out. He cleanses us. Amen. A double edged sword. That is the only way that you can get to the enemy. But with a double edged sword, the word of God. And as I said, whenever you, um, Speak out the word of God. Amen. Angels are activated. 
They're not activated because you cry and say, well, Lord, this is happening to me and blah, blah, blah. He doesn't want to hear you gripe and complain. Like the Israelites, it took them 40 years to do something that should have took four days. Griping and complaining sounds impossible, but it's very possible. Amen. So use the double-edged sword. Use the word of God. When the enemy comes up against you, use the word of God against him. Amen. Amen. Slices and dices. Hallelujah. The double edged sword, which is the word of God, slices and dices. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It's not one sided. It's two sided. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Repeat the word. When the enemy comes up against you, repeat the word. The devil was talking to Jesus high on a mountain. He told he told he was talking to Jesus and he was trying to get Jesus to bow to him. Jesus didn't argue with him. He repeated the word. Thou shalt serve the Lord thy God. Every time the, and the devil would repeat it back to him. And Jesus repeated it again. He kept repeating the word. He did not argue with the evil spirit. With, 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 do not argue with evil spirits. Jesus didn't argue with the devil. You don't have to. You don't have to. You have the power of God inside of you. You don't have to argue with evil spirits. And this is what's happening to a lot of people. When something evil comes up against them, amen, when something evil comes up against them, they argue with it. You don't argue with it. Leave me alone. Go away. God said you're not supposed to be here. I'm a child here. Just start repeating the word of God. Amen. I and the father are one. The blood of Jesus, you know, repeat the word of God to him. So to whoever bothers you, okay, if you repeat the word of God, angels will help you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Angels will activate when we quote scripture. Amen. They don't answer our words, but God's word. And the scripture is God's word. Amen overpowering, extremely strong or intense, overwhelming, not handleable. When you repeat the word of God to the enemy, you're un unhandleable. He can't do anything with you. He's, he can't even come have a comeback for you. Amen. Ungovernable, in, in, um, intractable, headstrong. Be headstrong about the word of God. Be headstrong about the word of God the same way you work with other things that happened in our lives. Amen. Amen. Unsubmissive. In no way submit to the enemy. Amen. In no way submit to the enemy. Relentless. Be rel the same way the devil tries to come up against you and he acts relentless. You become relentless with him. Don't let him over Relent you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And not lessening in severity. When the overpowering presence of God comes upon people, it's there, it doesn't lessen in severity, so to speak. It is. It takes over everything. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When God's presence is near, no one or nothing can trumpet. Amen. Nothing can trumpet. Revelation 117, vision of our glorified Christ. And, um, let me see. When God's presence is near, nothing can trumpet. Amen. When God's presence is near. Amen. Let's go to Revelation 117. And this is a vision of the glorified Christ. Revelation 117. All right. And when I saw him, no, nah, I'll go up a little bit. You know, I want to go up definitely. Okay. I'll start with Revelation 111. Okay. So he's heard something saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spoke with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. 
And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot and girt about with paps, with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were uh, white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as flame like fire, a flame of fire, and his feet like unto brass, as, a, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. See, there's the two-edged sword. Hallelujah. Amen. And his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. Amen. There's the two-edged sword. Amen. This is a vision of our glorified Christ. Amen. And 17 says, And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me. The right hand is the hand of power. Amen. He laid his right hand upon me. Amen. Saying unto me, fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and death. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus laid his right hand upon him. Amen. Um, when the presence of God is upon you, Hallelujah. You will know it. You will feel an unusual peace. It's different than any peace you've ever felt in your life. Amen. When God's hand is upon you. I, I know earlier this year, I'm going to tell you a story. Earlier this year, my daughter and I, and some of you who follow us know that we make gardens. We, we make gardens this year. Like uh, one, two, we had two, go well, actually three, because we had some going around the house. And I went outside one morning to check on my garden. My, I, we used a couple of raised, raised beds on one side of the house. And I went out to check on it with a cup of coffee like I usually do. And there was this overpowering presence, this strange, it was different, it, more different than anything that I ever felt. And I felt it outside. And as I walked around, I noticed it and I kind of slowed down. I stopped a little bit. The power that I was feeling, the power of God that I was feeling outside in my garden, I felt, uh, the song came to me, I come to the garden alone, while the dew is still on the roses. And I honestly felt God with me. It was so, it was like there was a hand or something, some kind of presence over me. And I, it, I, it, it was a heavy presence. I had to like go down a little bit because I just stopped. And in my senses, I was trying to hear it. I was trying to smell it and see it, but you can't. That presence was there. The power of God was so strong. All I could do was just, just start speaking in tongues and, and thanking him. Amen. I kept thanking God. I was like, thank you, God, for your presence. Hallelujah. Baruch Atah Hashem had a lie. And I just started blessing the Lord. And it was stayed. It was like a heavy, like a blanket or something, an invisible blanket over me. And it was warm and it felt comfortable. It was beautiful. I will never forget that as long as I live. As, lo as long as I live. Amen. Hallelujah. God was with me in the garden, y'all. Amen. And that might be part of what the devil didn't want me to tell. <laughs> That's why the sound went out on, on the YouTube uh, station. It has to be YouTube because I'm okay on this side and I will continue. Amen. Let us continue. Amen. Um, John 18, 6. Let's turn our swords to John 18. And this is how Christians should be. When the enemy comes up against you in any kind of way, like right now I'm preaching, all of a sudden YouTube sound just went out. My computer's fine. And when I put on the sound on my on my Mac, okay, on my laptop, it says the, the microphone is fine. I unplugged the microphone and plugged it back in. This is how Christians should be. Amen. Have so much of love, the love of God in you, that when the enemy tries to strike you from anyone or any way, you never know how it's coming. Always either have a backup. Yes, this is my backup here. I, I do it every Sunday, J-I-C, just in case. And I'm glad I did it this Sunday. Amen. 
and know that you're strong in Christ Jesus. You have God behind you. You have the word behind you. You have Jesus behind you, the blood of Jesus, his name. Amen. The two-edged sword. Always know that you are a child of the most high God and no weapon formed against you shall ever prosper. Amen. And everything that rises up against you, you shall judge. Hallelujah. Okay. John, uh, John 18, 6. Okay. I want to go up. Um, okay. I'll start with three. Judas then, having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, cometh thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. I think I've read this before. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto him, Whom seek ye? And they answered him, saying, Jesus of Nazareth. Nazareth. Jesus said unto them, I am he. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. And then it says in 6, As soon as he had said, said, spoken the word, as soon as Jesus said, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. And this is why you see so many people in church that fall backwards and you might not understand it. They went backward and fell to the ground. Amen. Hallelujah. And uh, God is our refuge and he is our strength in times of trouble. Amen. Psalm 46, 1. Let's go to um, New Te Old Testament. Okay, Psalm 46, 1. God is our fortress. Amen. It says, to the chief musician and for the sons of Korah, a song upon Alamoth, God is your refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Amen. God is your refuge and and strength. Leave it up to him. Don't try to handle things in your own strength. God is going to handle it for you. Amen. Amen. And I want to look up uh, refuge. Let's look up the word refuge. Let me see. I got to go to KJV plus. And it's H4268. Makasa. M-A-C-H-A-S-E-H, -E pronounced as Makasa, okay? A shelter. God is your shelter, your hope, your refuge, your trust, amen? Now, let's up, look, look up strength. Let's look up the word strength. Hold on. Uh, H, 5797. Um, force. God is your force. God is your security. Majesty, praise, boldness, loud, might, power, strength, strong. Are you hearing all of this we're dealing in here? We're talking about the overpowering presence of God. He's strong, strength, hallelujah. You can't outdo him. You can't, no one, nothing can outdo our God. Amen. Flesh cannot withstand God's presence. There's no flesh that can withstand the spirit of God, God's presence. Amen. Do people feel God's love in you? Amen. Do you carry God's presence? Take God's presence with you everywhere you go. Do people... Feel the love of God in you. Amen. It's easier to love people when you have the love of God in you. If you are having a problem loving people, there's not enough of the love of God in you. You got to be like God. He said, be ye holy for I am holy. Let's go to 1 John 4, 8. All right. In the um, New Testament. 1 John chapter 4, verse 8. Hallelujah. KJV. And it says, He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. Folks, I know some of you don't want to hear this, but you have to learn to love people. You have to have God's peace within you. 
and God's spirit within you to love people. Now, that doesn't mean you have to put up with people's shenanigans. That's not what it's saying. Love people. Don't you want people to love you? Amen. Love people. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, people shouldn't have to be in praise and worship to notice that you have the presence of God with you. Amen. They, they should know that there is something different in you. If people have not told you that they can feel God in you, that they can see God in you, then something's amiss. Because it's easy for people to see us. It's easy for people to see you. Amen. But do they see God in you? That's something to think about. Do people see Jesus Christ in you? Do they feel comfortable around you? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, God set us apart. Psalm 4, 3. Let's go back to Psalms. Chapter 4, verse 3. And it says, But know that the Lord hath set apart him that is godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call unto him. Amen. The Lord will hear when I call unto him because God has sanctified you. That's called being sanctified. God set you apart, apart from the world, different from the world. Amen. You're not like the world. You're in the world, but you're not of it. Amen. Hallelujah. You respond to situations differently. When you have the overpowering presence of God in you, the Holy Spirit inside of you, you respond differently. When something happens to you, this is why Jesus said, when somebody slaps you, give me the other side. Give him the other cheek also. You know, slap the other side. What he's trying to teach us is handle it differently. Don't fight back. Pray. Pray back. When someone hurts you, pray back. And pray for their soul because something is using them to cause them to treat you like that. Amen? Respond differently. You don't freak out. When things happen to you, you don't freak out. You're peaceful. Amen. You must have constant joy and peace. And I wish this for you today. I pray in Jesus' name that you have the joy of the Holy Ghost and the shalom, the holy peace that God has. And nothing by any means shall hurt you, move you, and cause you to, to bite back. When somebody bites at you, pray for them. Don't let them steal your joy and your peace. Amen. Now, and let's look at Galatians 5, 22. Okay, let's go to Galatians in the New Testament. Go back. Chapter 5, 22. But the fruit of the Spirit. We're going to talk about it. Talk about love and joy and peace. Amen. But the fruit of the Spirit. Is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. You have to circle that, write it down, print it out, put it on your refrigerator, whatever you need to do. Write it in the front of your Bible. Amen. Long-suffering. A lot of people don't like long-suffering. Amen. Be, you have to have patience, long suffering, because you're going to, if you can't take the little things that come to you, you'll never be able to handle the big ones that come to you. Amen. The saying says, and it's biblical, if you can't keep up with the footmen, if, if you can't keep up with the footmen, how can you keep up with the horses? Learn to keep up with the footmen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The Holy Spirit's power transforms us. You want to change? You want the Holy Spirit to transform you? He will. He transforms us and molds us into Christ likeness. Oop, there it is. Amen. You want to be like Christ? Let the Holy Spirit change you. Amen. Let the Holy Spirit of God change you. Don't remain the same. Something's wrong with you and you know you need to work on something. Ask God to help you to work on it. Amen. Let the Holy Spirit of God, the presence of God change you. Hallelujah. 
Like I said earlier, when I was walking in the garden, I felt that heavy presence upon me. It was wonderful. I didn't go back in the house cussing. <laughs> I was thankful. Change your ways. Amen. Hallelujah. We actually cultivate it. It takes time. And I'll end it with this. When you want the overpowering presence of God in you, begin to cultivate it. Read the word. Change your ways. You have to, it takes time. You have to give God all of the, your, the permission. Amen. Because God is not a bully and he's not the mafia. God is not a dom. Amen. Let him know that you want to change, but you need his help. Amen. To say, God, I need your help. Are you saved? Are you saved? If you're not saved, just say this. Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I believe you died on a cross and rose three days later. And I thank you for that. I accept you as my savior. Amen. I accept you as my savior and I love you. Amen. And if you said something like that, I mean, if you said that, amen, Jesus just accepted you, forgave all of your sins, and you are now a member of the family of God. Amen. Welcome to the family of God. Go find a Bible-believing, tongue-talking church, hallelujah, a church that knows the Bible, knows why it's there, knows who made it, who printed it, and, and, and what chapter goes with what chapter, what book can, goes with one book, what book, amen. Learn about the word of God. You cannot fight off enemies without the power of the double-edged sword, the two-edged sword coming out of your mouth. You cannot fight the enemy with your own words. Devil, leave me alone. You got to use the word and the angels will activate, amen. Congratulations if you just accepted Jesus Christ as your savior. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. I apologize for everything that we went through on the YouTube channel. I don't understand what happened there, but everything's fine with my microphone and everything's okay. Amen. Uh, but I will use this video. I have two videos. This I don't know what's happening with this one, but I will upload this video onto YouTube. And I'll try to work with it to see if I could get the sound of this one to go with the live. I don't know, but I'll, I'll end up, I'll put it on YouTube. And I want to say something to you. Happy Thanksgiving, because I think Thanksgiving comes up before we uh, have another meeting. Amen. And let's pray to God that this doesn't happen in, in our next meeting. Uh, okay. Next Sunday coming up. Amen. To God be the glory for the things he has done. Reverend Essie signing off. Hallelujah. God bless you and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you. Hallelujah. May God be gracious unto you. Lift up his countenance and give you peace. Amen. And remember to pray for Jerusalem. And he said he will put his name on them. Amen. Pr keep praying for the peace of Jerusalem. Jesus told us to. Why? Because Jesus told us to. Amen. I really apologize for all that happened today, but I just, I had to keep on going. I had to keep on keeping on. Amen. I'm not on here to be pretty. I mean, I want to look nice for the Lord to present his word, you know, but I want to present the word. Amen. And I got all the gift. Okay. I will see you next Sunday. Amen. To God be the glory for the things he has done. Amen.